How's everybody doing? Woo! We're going to get the energy up in here by talking about cultural heritage preservation. Uh, did, can we, this lighting sucks. Can we turn off any of this? It's like, I don't know how you guys sat in fluorescent light for like all morning. How's that? Oh, does that feel better? We're just getting the mood started <laughs> for cultural heritage preservation. Um, Hello. Um, what I'm going to talk to you all today about is a project uh, called New Palmyra that myself and a number of associates who are also present are working on here at um, Boss Asia 2016. Uh, but the project really, you know, and, and it, it's focused on preserving endangered cultural heritage with digital tools um, using an approach that uh, is uh, very reminiscent of uh, open source development, community building, those sorts of techniques. Um, and it, you know, the story of this project really starts with this gentleman who you may have seen around in um, various sorts of facsimile, um, who's named Basil Cartabil. He's a uh, Syrian-Palestinian uh, open, uh, open internet, open uh, information activist, uh, open source software developer. Um, who started working in around Damascus around 2005 on uh, remodeling uh, the ruins of this city named Palmyra uh, that is one of a sort of a cultural jewel of Syria. Uh, Syria has the most uh, UNESCO World Heritage sites of any country of its size. It has about six of them. Um, so it's a fairly rich, rich ground. Uh, so in order to uh, preserve this, to give, give people some insight onto what the city was like, uh, Basil with a group of publishers named Alaus in Damascus uh, started 3D modeling this place um, and came up with some, you know, through research and um, development. Um, created the, the, these uh, 3D models um, that they kept, unfortunately, closed. Uh, so there were things like this. There were some renderings made. Um, and it sort of culminated in um, a video like this. This isn't my music. This is like what they And this is, if you can read on there, this is from 2009. <laughs> I don't know who made, John, do you know who made the music for this? Do you have any Basil make this music? <laughs> huh? Oh, does it? Oh, maybe it does. Good eye, Gloria. It's like, oh, there are credits in there. Music by Nori Iskandar. We need to find Nori. Get him back into service. Um, so anyway, you can see this is sort of a, a low res, uh, early blocking sort of the walkthrough of this city. Um, and since the time where this was produced, a couple of things happened. One is the whole country was thrown into turmoil. Um, and so, unfortunately, this uh, data is largely lost. Um, we've tried to do what we can about getting it, but they're not interested in um, opening this data so it can be shared with the world. Um, and the other thing is that in the you know, ci civil unrest there, um, Basil was interred um, for about uh, three years, was in a prison camp called Adra. Um, where we had some communication with him, and about six months ago, last October, he was moved to a you know, known location. Um, and so there are efforts um, to find his location and health status and get him out, which is a whole other topic of conversation. You can see him, you know, his, his, uh, th there was a global um, sort of uh, uh, promotional events that were, um, uh, around the world yesterday on the 19th. Um, and the other thing that, that's happened is uh, ISIS has rolled into the area um, 
and started destroying some of the cultural heritage of this reason, region. Uh, this is a building called the Temple of Bell um, in Palmyra. Um, and you can see here are a couple of satellite images uh, from, uh, again, around October of last year, um, where the temple used to stand. And now there's just an archway in the, in the front of it. Um, and so because of all these reasons, uh, we relaunched this project, um, both to make this data available for research and other sorts of creative projects, uh, also um, to tell the story of how Basil was focused on um, uh, disseminating, advancing the cultural heritage of Syria uh, in a way that was uh, really a positive uh, force for the culture of the region. Um, and as I said before, we're approaching it as an open source software strategy. Um, so you know, this slide is just to show some of the folks that are on board. There's some uh, places like MIT Media Lab, uh, where Basil's actually been offered a fellowship to continue this project uh, once he gets released. Uh, Creative Commons, several art, arts centers. With a big portion of the project is creative, so we're um, developing a lot of creative uh, creative works, artworks, getting artists involved, people that can use this data. Um, and so our approach, you know, has several stages. One of them, the, the first is research, gathering data on uh, how we're going to, you know, how to remodel this stuff, plans, things like that. Um, we, we're open sourcing everything in public domain, all the data. Um, that we gather everything we make um, with it. <clears throat> and then rebuilding the models. This is our new model of the Temple of Bell. Um, it's just several renderings of it going in the door. Um, and, and interesting things happened since we started doing this. That, you know, on the website, all this is downloadable. There's a GitHub if you go on newpalmyra.org. Um, people have started contributing. Uh, so here's some contributed other renders, various daylight types of, you know, times of day, the Temple of Bell, uh, reconstructed in virtual space. Um, we've had a lot of 3D prints made. Uh, there are two temples of Bell, I guess that's how you, um, I don't know what the plural of Temple of Bell is. I'm, so if there are any archaeologists that want to figure that out for me. Um, and the ar arches, of, arches of Triumph, which have also been destroyed. Uh, we did a 3D printing sprint with people all over the world contributing to this, to, to 3D print these things, get them in people's hands. Um, things in virtual reality space. Um, there are these gentlemen, virtual gentlemen here, hanging out at the Temple of Bell. Um, and also, uh, uh, people have contributed a whole lot of other uh, statuary artifacts from this site. So this is Asad Allah. It's a lion statue that was also destroyed. Um, looking pretty good there. Um, and the Arches of Triumph being recreated. Annie made this one. Hey! Uh, and there's another rendering of that. Um, so so we're doing both this online process of getting people to contribute, um, build new models, contribute research data, uh, but we're also doing a number of workshops around the world. This one was in Paris. I'm um, trying to get people to be stakeholders in this process and just be involved uh, with you know, the, the prospects of cultural heritage in general. Um, more VR. Um, Just look at this one for a while. Um, so Paris, Dubai, um, uh, Hong Kong, Berlin. We've done workshops all over the all over the world dealing with this sort of cultural heritage preservation. Um, people, you know, contributed to models, rebuilding things. And so, you know, if anybody wants to come downstairs, we're doing the world's first 2D print of the Arches of Triumph downstairs where we have a lot of people coloring sections and we're making kind of a group crowdsourced you know, rendering 
of this thing. We're down in the tinkering studio, so if anybody wants to come down and contribute their brick to the rebuilding of uh, Syrian cultural heritage, you're more than welcome. We'll be there all day. Um, and that's all I got for you today. Uh, my name's Barry. Uh, the project's New Palmyra. It's at newpalmyra.org. We would love anyone to contribute. Um, what time is it? I probably have a couple questions. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them about anything, really, not even about this. Just if you have questions in general. Now, now's the time to get my feedback on it. I have one question. Yes. Is, are the 3D models like accurate? Or they, I'm sorry, are they what? The 3D models? Are they oh, accurate? Oh. Um, yes, they, well, they're as accurate as, we, we keep improving them. So we're not, it's, it's another one of those release or early often sorts of things where um, we're doing the best we can and we're improving the models in like sort of an open source way as we go. I mean, there are archaeologists that contact us and say, you know, what's this? brick doing there or whatever and then we you know kind of modify it and do some research and see what the thing is and try and make it better all the time in terms of um, we're remodeling these buildings in sort of a speculative way uh, because there was really no we're not remodeling the ruins as they were in 2015 uh, we're remodeling sort of an ideal state of these things as they were built and so the whole project has like a speculative bent on it uh, there was no point in history where all these buildings were just standing there perfectly built. And so we're sort of, you know, it's very atemporal. Um, and we're just taking a snapshot from a lots of different uh, times and reconstructing this thing. So. Do you have any questions? Yeah, another question. What data do you have to work on? Are these uh, like photographs or plans or? Good question. And where, where do you get them from? Um, we're using a lot of different techniques. We're using uh, photogrammetry when we can. The thing about photogrammetry and those types of techniques is the thing was already a ruins even before they blew it up. And so it's not like we have a, an, a completed building there that we can just, you know. Um, so there's a lot, of, uh, some of its best guesses. There's th This site has been studied by uh, many, many archaeologists. So there's information out there, and, and we can make best guesses based on other architecture and things like that. So um, in that sense, like I said, we're not snapshotting the ruins as they were. We're making sort of a, a best guess of you know what they looked like. Um, uh, how do you, I mean, the, let's say, archaeologists, how do you feel, do you interact with them? Are they interested in uh, they're very, yeah, they're very interested. They, um, there's a lot of dialogue in the archaeology community about digital tools and how they can uh, be brought to bear on the prob problems of like cultural heritage preservation. Um, uh, this destruction is a big problem a lot of places around the world, and it's actually a big. It's also a big. Um, I mean, it goes so far as to be a national security issue where there's a big black market of looting of artifacts and things like that that both feed terrorist, terrorist organizations and um, other sorts of bad af actors, both sovereign and private. So um, there's a lot of discussion about how these digital tools come into play and how we can use modeling and the dissemination of information to um, deal with some of these issues. So, but there's no there's no consensus really, and so and and not much that that community is just starting to think about this kind of thing, and so it's more there's a lot of education involved when talking to archaeologists about like okay why is this a valuable strategy and there's mixed opinion on it so. All right, thank you very much.